QuickBooks Online 2022 Receive Payment Transaction and Form. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with a 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. In the business view, as opposed to the accounting view, if you wanted to switch to the accounting view, it is something you can do by going to the cog up top and going down to the accounting view. We will be toggling back and forth from time to time, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file, which is in the accounting view to see where things are located in the two views. Let's open up some reports by going to the tab up top, right clicking on it, duplicating the tab, go back to the tab to the left, right click on it again, duplicate the tab, go back to the tab to the left one more time, right clicking on it, duplicating it again. As those are thinking, going to jump back on over to the accounting view and the sample company just to note where the reports are located, which are on the left-hand side. Very straightforward in the accounting view. In back on over in the business view, the reports are located. We're currently in the second tab and the business overview section. And then we're going to be into the reports on the left-hand side. Let's open up our standard reports, the balance sheet first, the good old balance sheet. And then we're going to close up the hamburger. And then let's do a range change from 010122 to 123122 and run it. And then let's go to the tab to the right and now do the same thing with the profit loss business overview. We want to take a look at the P&L, the profit and loss, and the income statement. Close up the hamburger. Scrolling up top, range change from 010122 to 123122 and run it. And then go to the tab to the right one more time. Back to the business overview, this time to the trial balance, which I'm trying to convince people is a good report to use to practice with the data input. You're going to type in up top trial balance to find it because it's way at the bottom, which isn't fair because it should be a favorite. It should be people's fave. It should be like amongst the faves. And then we're going to close up the hamburger. Scroll up top and do a range change from 010122 to 123122 and run it. Run in. Okay, so last time we entered some invoices and now we're going to go to some receive payment items. So let's go back to the left to receive the payments. We could go to the plus button and we hit invoices last time. We expect then to receive payments given the fact that the invoice means we made a sale on account and therefore we expect to be paid at some point in the future. At that point, we enter the receive payment item. To track the invoices, however, you might do so in practice by going to the get paid or paid area here. But that's what it looks like in the business view. If you were in the accounting view, it would be in the sales area. And then you might go say to the customers in the business view, you would go into the get paid area and then go into the customers and close up the hamburger. And then you might go to the particular customer that you're getting a payment from, for example, such as Anderson Guitars. I'll close this thing up. And then we might see some, there's an open invoice here. Here's an overdue invoice. We can then receive the payment and we could create the receive payment form directly by clicking on this button. The other way you might track for the open invoices is you might say, hey, let me just give me a list of all the open invoices. How about that? We can open up the hamburger here and to do that, they don't put it in the same area in the business view. They put it up in the bookkeeping area. If I want to just look for open uh, items or invoices in the transactions tab. If you're in the other view, the accounting view, it's in the same area, which I would call the customer center. And then you would move over to the sales area or the invoices area. Uh, two, two things you could do to sort basically for the invoices. So I'm going to go to the transactions items and then I'm going to go to the uh, all sales area. And then I'm going to close up the hamburger. You can also do some filtering down here and say, let's let's go to uh, the drop down and let's say invoices and let's say the status is open invoices and apply those. 
and then we've got our invoices in this format which you can hit the drop down and say receive payment so for example if we wanted to receive a payment for this one and you can say okay i'm getting a payment i got paid in some way either electronically or with a cash or a check or something i'm going to say receive the payment i could click here and that would then open up the receive payment form and automatically check off the related invoice that we tied it out to or closing this back out to get to that same area i could then hit the hamburger up top and go into the plus button or the add item and then the next step would of course be to receive the payment in our series of steps on an accrual type of transaction related to the receivables or customer cycle i could then type in here anderson mr anderson tab and then uh down below let's tab through it we're going to say this is as of the 18th let's say we received the payment and the method is going to be let's just say it's cash just for general purposes on the method and then the question is do i want to deposit it into the uh the cac the checking account directly or do i want to put it into an undeposited funds account which they don't they haven't populated they didn't give us an undeposited funds account but i'll talk about that shortly here notice that down here you've got the invoices so i can actually link to the invoice if i want to i can open up the invoice this way do you want to leave without saving i'll say yeah let's check it out go into it there's the invoice that we're we're basically tying out to and then if I go back to this invoice and I wanted to then receive the payment, this is the other way you might you might look at this. I'm in the invoice and I could say receive payment here, which will create the receive payment form. Once again with Anderson, and I'm going to change the date to the 18th. And then I'm going to say the payment once again is cash. And so there we have it. And now it's checked off that item. So that means we're going to receive the payment. Now the question here is then is going to be, do we want to put the payment directly into the cash which i'm going to say is our checking account or do we want to uh, put it into an undeposited funds account and then put it into the checking account and note that they've changed the name of the undeposited funds account to just be called the payments to deposit account so if you hear the term undeposited funds that's still used in the desktop version it used to be used in the online version same concept the idea being do you want to put the deposit directly into your checking account at this point in time or do you want to put them into a clearing account and then move it into the checking account so that it'll line up with what's being matched on the bank side of things to see that more in detail let's take a look at a flow chart this is a flow chart from the desktop view but it's just a flow chart of the transaction process the flow and we have basically the same form names in it so i think it's a good tool to use so in the past we entered an invoice which increases the accounts receivable now we're getting paid on the invoice and the question is should i take this document and put it directly into the checking account at this point you can't do so it could be more simplified but there's a couple things to keep in mind one is that if you use this form to make the deposit into the checking account when you look at the transaction detail instead of having all the increases in your checking account coming from a deposit form you can have some increases from the deposit form and the receive payment form not a big deal but you want to keep that in mind when you're sorting your transactions and trying to look for the increases it adds a little bit more of a nuance in that a little bit more of a confusion in my mind from it the other thing, the big thing you want to keep in mind is, am I entering the data into my account in the same format as it's gonna be shown on the bank statement because I want to be able to do a bank reconciliation, matching out what's in my system to what's on the bank because that is a huge internal control. If you're getting payments, for example, from a credit card company or cash payments, it's likely that you'll need to use some kind of clearing account like payments to deposit or undeposited funds so that you can then group those deposits together and format them in the same format as you expect to see them deposited on the bank side of things so that when you then tie out your accounts to the bank accounts in the bank reconciliation process it will be as easy as possible if on the other hand you're receiving just simply a check for example or one electronic transfer then it's likely that that's exactly what it will look like on the bank side of things as well and you might simply be able to put it directly into the checking account at this point we'll have the same issue with the receive payments item which is the cash basis kind of issue in that 
where might get cash payments at a cash register, for example, or credit card payments, both of which we're usually going to have to group together because we're going to make the deposit into the checking account, which will entail multiple sales items. And we therefore want to put the undeposited funds transferred into our checking account in the same number or format as we expected to see on the bank statement. So let's go back on over then. I'm going to use the undeposited funds or clearing account, or in this case, they changed it to the payments to deposit. So remember, this is, a ba is basically an account. It's going to be an account that's a clearing account, a holding account, and it, you might have heard it called in the past undeposited funds, same concept. So what is this going to do? It's going to decrease the accounts receivable, and it's also going to decrease the subledger for Anderson Guitars, and it's going to put the money into the clearing account, which is a payments to deposit account, which we will then deposit at a future point. It's also going to create a link to this invoice to show that that invoice has now closed, has now been paid. So let's go ahead and save it and close it and check it out. So we're going to go back back on over and I think I, I went over to the second tab to do my transactions because I got all, I got kind of messed up with that undeposited funds thing. So I'm going to open this tab back up. I'm going to go back to the business view on it and open my report back up. Okay, so I'm back in action now. My report's back up. If I scroll down, we see that we've got this account in other current assets that is called payments to deposit. Same thing as the undeposited funds that just changed the name. Just like most of the changes, that this is the kind of thing that you can expect to happen with QuickBooks Online. They're A-B testing. They're using new names, undeposited funds. We don't like that. They put in de payments to deposit. These are the kinds of things you would adjust. But again, the double entry accounting system, it's the same. So it's just a matter of what kind of differences, what kind of changes did they make to the surface level, which is generally moving stuff around on the website and basically name changes to sound a little bit more hit, you know, or something like that. But in any case, if we go into the 5,000 here, we could go into that. There's our payment form. If we drill down on that, that'll take us back to then the source document. So drilling down on that takes us back down to the receive payment form. Closing that back out, I'm going to scroll back up top and go back to our uh, report. And I'm holding control, scrolling up just a bit. So that is that. Notice it's an other current asset. So it's really a cash account, but they have to put it down here in other current assets because that's going to be the tool that they, they need those two separate accounts, I believe, to link it to the deposit form to automatically kind of pull it in to the deposit and so and also the cash account has its own kind of functionality with regards to how it's going to be formatted in other words it could be linked for example with bank feeds so that's going to be that the other side went to the accounts receivable decreasing it so the a to the r the accounts receivable goes down right here which is great but that's indicated by the date i would also like to see this information by uh customer so let's go back to this report. Let's make another report going to the end of this. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it again and make another report, which is the accounts receivable subledger, the accounts receivable uh, uh, summary, the customer summary. So let's go into the reports and let's close up the hamburger. Let's scroll down to who, you, who owes you stuff and then go to the customer balance detail. Let's go to the customer balance detail report and there it is so mr anderson uh is here and now we've got our invoice this is the only invoice remaining we can see the detail i want to see more detail than that we can go to the customize up top and say let's do some filtering options here and say i'd like to see the the ar paid information so i'm going to say all here and then run that so i can see what i just did so there it is. There's the payment for that 5,000. That's what we expect to see. 5,000, we paid it off. We can also see that information if I go back to the left and we were then to go into like the customer center, which would be in the get paid area. In the get paid area, that's how you say it when you're cool, instead of the sales area, the customer center. And then you go into the customer center here. That would be the old view. But now in the business view, we're in the get paid section and then the customer area. And then you could go into the Anderson Guitars. And then you see here's the 5,000 and the 5,000. And now this invoice has now been paid. And if you go into that invoice, it's going to show that it has been paid with a little indication payment made. And if you click on the payment made, it links on over to it or it gives you this thing that then links on over to it. So you can click on that 
and everything's all tied together all nice and neat you can also find that information you might want to track by your invoices for example which in here is in a whole different section they put that down in the bookkeeping section if you were in the accounting view it would still be in the sales section it would be here if you're in the in the business view it's going to be in the bookkeeping transactions item up top hold on i just had to hit a fly there i got it okay it was more of a gnat wasn't not too hard to hit a gnat but in any case so it's in here we're going to then say all transactions or all sales transactions take a look at the invoices and let's say all invoices at this point all invoices and then there's our invoice and this one is indicating as has been paid and we still have the open ones here which have not yet been paid that's that's what it means when it says it's open when you paid it you closed it they don't say you would think it say closed here but no it's open and then you paid it so one other thing to take a look at that is next we're going to make a deposit we'll make the deposit later but just note that if I go into the deposit form, because I put it into that undeposited funds or things to be deposited, it pops up here. So this is when you want to use the deposit form instead of the register. So in other words, if I go back to my flow chart over here, this deposit form, you want to use that actual deposit form, the actual deposit form itself, when you're depositing things that are going out of the clearing account, which would be undeposited funds or the deposits that need to be paid, whatever you want to call it, because that is the link. That's the thing that's going to pull those in there and help you to group that stuff out. So anything that's in that clearing account, that's when you want to use the deposit form, which we'll see in a future presentation. Okay, I know what you're thinking. That was great. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. This time for Jones. Okay, okay. We'll do it again. So we're going to go to the get paid section. This one's for Jones. So let's receive, imagine we got a payment from Jones Guitars here. So if we went into Jones Guitars, close up the hamburger, we've got then, we're looking at this one this time. We could hit the receive payment right there from Jones. Or you might find this by going then, you could say, I'm just going to look at the transactions detail. That might be the way you like to do this. You're like, I'm going to go into my transactions for the sales. I got a payment on an invoice that's open. Let's filter this thing by my invoices and just look at the open invoices and run it. And then the one I'm looking for is right there. That's the one That's the one I got the payment for, right? I, the, actually, no, it was this one. This is the one. That's the one. So I'm going to go ahead and run it, the receive payment. That'll open up the receive payment form, which you can also get to by going to the hamburger to the receive payment and then typing in Jones Guitars, and you would get to, in essence, the same part or the same place. So we're going to say this is there. I'm just going to say cash just for the ease of the thing. It's going to go into, once again, the payment to deposit. The, the clearing account is what I'm going to use here. And then going down below, it's already checking off the invoice, which was the beginning balance invoice that we entered when we first entered the beginning balance for this particular customer. So what's this going to do? It's going to decrease the accounts receivable, decrease the sub ledger for Jones Guitar, and put it into the clearing account of undeposited funds, prepping it to be grouped together in whatever way it needs to be when we make the actual deposit form, which will match the bank statement. So, so let's save it and close it save it and close it and then check it out so we're going to again go to the balance sheet over here hold down control i'm going to run it again just to make sure we're working with some fresh stuff we're going to go into this payment to deposit which is a clearing account it used to be called undeposited funds but that's not undeposited funds that's lame we need a name change and then we're going to go into the five thousand, and then there it is there it is that looks good closing this back out scrolling back up going back to our report the other side is in the accounts receivable the a to the r going into the ar accounts receivable and this one is going to be for jones jones 7500 that looks good and then going back on over, we have the sub report for the accounts receivable, the A to the R right here. Let's freshen it up, running it so we could see the detail for Jones. There's the payment and there's the invoice linking those two, two things out. Let's go back to the first tab and just take a look at our, our centers. Let's go to the get paid center. 
get paid, center. And then go down to Jones Guitars. Jones. So there we have it. So now we've got this one is closed because it's been paid. If I was to go into the invoice, if I was to go in to the invoice here, we would then see the the amount of the payment and then I can link to the payment if I wanted to by doing that and that will link us to the payment so that looks good we can also run this report and check it out by the transaction detail you could say let's check it out by the transaction detail that's how I like to see it so let's go to the transactions up top close up the hamburger go to the sales transactions and take a look at our invoices invoices let's just look at all the invoices so we can see the ones that we paid and the ones we didn't so we've got these two have been paid and we've got the overdue for smith there lastly let's take a look at our deposit information if i was to deposit this then i should have these two items that are popping up because those are the two items that are in that holding account do it again Okay, one more time, but this is the last time. This is the last time. We're gonna do it one more time here. So then I, if I'm here, I'm gonna search for the open invoices so I can filter this and I can say, let's just look at the open invoices. And then I still got this one that's overdue. So I can do that by hitting the receive payment here, or I could see this is for, what's that name? Smith Guitars. So I can hit the plus button and type in or make a receive payment type in smith guitars smith guitars tab it on over and then this is on the 18th too we'll just do the same thing cash and it's going to go into the clearing account the payment to deposit otherwise or used to be called undeposited funds so same thing different name and then this is going to be decrease in the ar decrease in the sub account for smith guitars and the other side is going into our clearing account which is now called payments to deposit Let's save it and close it and check it out. This time, let's check it out with the trusty trial balance just to get used to looking at it, making sure it's fresh over here. Balance sheet on top of the income statement. We can say, okay, there's the payments to deposit right there going into it. And we've got our three payments. There it is. And there's the last one we just did right there. 7,005 and the 8,000, I think was the 8,000 was the last one. And the other side is going into the accounts receivable the a to the r going into that one the a to the r accounts receivable and so there's the payment for that one looks good scrolling back up we know that uh, if we look at the other side of the detail for the ar by going to the detail account and then we can see the total for jones was it that we just did here or smith let's we got to freshen this one up it needs freshening run it again make it fresh there it is that looks good so it went there back down that looks good let's go back to the first tab and just check out the customer center on the get paid center let's take a look at our get paid center over here customers and then we can go down to smith guitars we could see the activity there looks good the invoice has now been paid if i was to go into the invoice we can then see that it's been paid with a little link and the giant paid thing there. So it's not very, you can't really miss that one. They could have made it red, maybe make it even more out there. And then I could then say, if I hit the plus button and we went to the deposit, which we'll do in a future presentation, we've got these three amounts in there now, which total up to the 20,500, which are those three payments that represents what's currently in the payments to deposit, which used to be called undeposited funds so if we were going to deposit all that at one time imagine it's all cash which again we probably wouldn't have twenty thousand five in cash but the idea being that if we were to deposit it at one time we want to put it all together at one time in the deposit so it'll match what's on the bank statement making the bank reconciliation easy let's go back on over to our trial bounds just to see where we're at this is where we stand at this point in time the debits are left leg the credits are our right leg and we're standing on them so uh, if your numbers tie out to this numbers and you're following along, then great. If not, try changing the date range. It's often a date issue. And we'll be uh, looking at the uh, transaction detail reports at the end of the section. So that is another way that you can diagnose any differences.